at the going down of the sun and in the morning, he will remember them. But then Jim Crossan has never forgotten his friends, buried in the cemeteries that are the legacy of the Death Railway. Jim, Jack Jennings and Morris Naylor are all survivors of that monstrous project. But not only are they railway men, they worked on its most infamous section. That's what our job was, to build the, the bridge over the River Kwai. Originally there were two, a wooden bridge that's long gone and nearby this metal one, much of which is original. It's still in use today. The Japanese needed the railway to extend their reach from Thailand westwards into Burma. They were thinking of India beyond, but the cost of that expansionism was paid for in human lives, perhaps 100,000 of them. Most were Asian slaves, but 12,000 Allied servicemen also died because of cruelty and neglect. It was absolute hell. We did dig our own graves on two or three occasions. It's overgrown, but this is the actual mass grave that Jack Jennings was forced to dig. Only the abrupt end to the war spared the POWs. Seventy years later, the bridge is a big attraction. But today, sightseers here were more interested in being pictured alongside three of those who built it. This was a moment of levity during a visit that has inevitably focused on solemn reflection. Jim Crossan serenaded one of the friends he came looking for. He and Bob Nemo were parted 72 years ago. When the death railway was complete, one in three of the men who had worked on it were dead. It is an indelible stain, a war crime, that will resonate far beyond the lifetimes of three old soldiers for whom today's pilgrimage wasn't just a visit, but a farewell. John Irvine, News at 10, at the Bridge on the River Kwai.